Hey everyone, this is Ryan King, and in this Blender beginner tutorial, I'm going to be making this abstract cube scene. So let's get started. I'm in Blender right now, and I'm going to just delete my lamp. So I'll click on the lamp, and let me just turn screencast keys on really quick so you can see what I'm using right here. Uh, you can see what the shortcut keys are that I'm clicking on, and I'll just click on my lamp and delete it by pressing X and delete. Now I do select with uh, right click select because I used Blender before they switched to left click select as default. So I just got used to it, but um, probably a lot of you are using the left click select. So just select normally however you would select. And so now I'll select the cube and I'll press period on the number pad to zoom into it. And I'll press tab to go into edit mode, make sure everything's selected, and I'll press control B, and that'll add a bevel effect to our cube. So I'll just move it to however big I want it, and then I will scroll wheel without clicking again. I'll just scroll wheel, and that'll add geometry to that bevel. So I'll just add however much geometry, just maybe like that, that's pretty good. And then I'll click to confirm that, and then I will tab to go back into object mode, and I'm going to shade this smooth. So I'm going to add smooth shading. And so I will go object and click on shade smooth. So now it's all shaded smooth. Now I'm going to add an HDRI so that we can have some nice realistic lighting. So to add the HDRI, I'm going to go to the world settings right here, and I'm going to click on this and click on environment texture. And then I'll click open right here. I'll leave a link in the video description of which HDRI I'm using. I'm using the Winter River 1K HDRI, and that's on HDRI Haven. So I'll click on that and add it in. And then uh, really quick, just make sure that your color management is set to filmic. And I'm gonna make the look uh, high contrast. And this is going to give uh, more accurate lighting to the render. And now I can go into rendered mode by holding Z and moving my mouse up or just clicking right here. And I can see here's the HDRI and the cube. So I wanna give this cube a material now. So I'll click right here on the materials and I will click new to add a new material. I'm just gonna call it metal. And I'm going to turn the base color to kind of like a gray color and turn this metallic right here all the way up and then turn the roughness down just like that to however much you want. I'm just gonna do that much. And now I want to uh, add an array to this, these cubes so that they're kind of arrayed out. And so to do that, I'll go back into the solid mode by just clicking here or press Z and just moving your mouse over this way. And then click right here on this wrench and then we're gonna add modifiers. So click add modifier and we're gonna add an array and that kind of duplicates it. I'm gonna set this value of the count to five. So we have five of them. And then I'm going to add another array so that we're going to array this over this way. So I'm gonna click add modifier, add an array, and then I'll just scroll down, turn this count to five. And then right here, this we're gonna to turn to zero because this is where it's arraying it. We don't want it to be arrayed out again on the X axis like this. Uh, so we'll turn that to zero. The middle value right here, we're gonna to set to one and then we'll make sure the count is up to five. And then we're gonna do that again so that then they're arrayed up. So I'll scroll back up here and I will click on add modifier and I'll add an array again, scroll down. And then I'm going to set this count of this one to five. And you can see again, it's arraying it out on the X axis. So right here, I'm going to click on this value and turn it to zero. And the bottom value, I'm gonna to turn to one. And so now it's arrayed up on the Z axis. So now we have this cool uh, cube tower, right? Like this, I'm going to press zero on the number pad and that'll jump into our camera. And then we can render out the scene in this camera. So I wanna uh, move this camera to a different location. So I will click on it right here and I'll press G and just kind of move it a little bit more into the center and click. And then I'll press G and double tap Z. And then that will pull it in and out. So I'll just go up like this. And then uh, I'm gonna click right here to, uh, I'm actually gonna click on this one on the render settings of the dimensions. And I want it to be just a square image. So I will hover my mouse over this value. I'll press control C and that'll copy the value. And then I will move my mouse over this value and press control V and that'll paste the value. So now it's 1920 by 1920 when it renders, it'll be square. 
and I'll press G, move this over a little bit, and press G again, and double tap Z, move it in just a bit, and I'll press G and just move it. You can move it to wherever you want, I just like that. And now I wanna add a ground plane, so press Shift A, and then click on plane, and then let's press S and just scale it out until it's really big. And you can see it's actually being cut off right here. That's because the camera has a distance limit to how far it can see. We can add though more distance to that. So let's click on the camera, go over to the camera settings, and then this uh, clip start and clip end, we're gonna change the end. Just like uh, instead of 100, just change it to 1000. So just add another zero, click enter. And now you can see it's a lot uh, farther out and then just click back on this uh, plane and just press S and scale it so that we can just, we can't see anything else, just the plane is covering everything. And then, so that our render will be faster, I'm going to press Control B while I'm in the camera, and then I'll click and drag and select this whole camera, ang uh, I'll just select this whole camera angle with Control B, and then if we go into rendered mode, it's not gonna render all this area around here, it's only gonna preview what's inside. Uh, so that's a lot better. Now you can see if I go back into solid mode, you can zoom in, you can see that it's actually cutting through this. So I will click on our plane, I'll press G and that'll grab the plane. And then I'll press Z to move it on the Z axis. And then I'm just going to pull it down so that the cube is just sitting on the ground and you can even hold shift and that will make more detailed movements and just click when it's on the ground. You can zoom, you can pull down and just press G and Z and just move it until it's just like about that so that the cubes are sitting on the ground plane. Uh, let's save this project if you haven't saved already. So go to file and save as, and I'll just save this on my desktop in a folder and I'll just call it abstract cubes. And then you can click save as. And so now our blender file is saved and let's go into rendered mode. We're pressing Z and pulling our mouse up. And let's add a material to this ground plane. So make sure it's selected, click on the materials tab and click on new. And we're gonna turn the base color all the way down. So it's black. And then we are going to turn the roughness down a bit. So it's kind of shiny. And I wanna duplicate this and then just have single cubes kind of on the ground. So I'll press shift D and that'll duplicate this. And then I'll hold down my middle mouse button and move around until it's locked onto the axis that I want and just pull it over kind of right here and then click. And then we only want one cube, I don't want all these arrayed cubes, so I'll click on the modifiers, and then I'll just click exit, click this X button, and that'll remove all of those uh, modifiers. So now we just have one cube. I'll press G, and then hold down with my middle mouse wheel and just pull it over, and then click, and then press G. And you can also press G and then like X, and then that'll pull it over in the X axis. And I'm just gonna move it over where I want. And I'm just gonna have a few cubes just kind of on the ground like this. So I'll press Shift D again, hold down with my middle mouse button and drag over. And then I'll press R to rotate this. And then I'll press Z and rotate it on the Z, Z axis. And then I'll click on this one, press R and Z. And then I'll just keep doing that. So Shift D, click with my middle mouse button, and then G and uh, X and just pull it over and then uh, rotate it. And we'll just do that and just kind of make the cubes uh, randomly placed around. And I do want there to be a cube on top of this cube. So I'll click on it and I'll press period on the number pad. So it'll jump uh, to it. And then I'll press shift D and Z and then pull it up. And you can just move around and press uh, G and Z and just make the cube so it's sitting on top of the other one. And then I'll press R and Z just kind of rotate it to a random position and press zero on the number pad to go back into camera view. And you can see that's looking pretty cool now. I'm just gonna see what that looks like in rendered mode. And I do wanna make these cubes a bit uh, brighter. So I'll go, I'll click on this one of these cubes. I'll go to the materials right here. And the base color, I'm just gonna uh, make that a bit lighter and uh, maybe turn down the roughness a little bit, just like that. And now I want to actually delete some of the cubes in this uh, giant stack of cubes so that it looks like the cubes have maybe kind of like fallen off. So I'll go back into solid mood by pressing Z and then moving over and that'll go back into solid view. I'll zoom in here, click on these uh, stack of cubes 
and I will click right here on the wrench to go to the modifiers and I want to apply these so that they'll actually turn into geometry because if we tab into edit mode you can see this is the only actual cube these are all just a duplicate of them they're just arrayed out so I'll just click apply apply and apply and now if we tab into edit mode you can see these are all actual mesh so uh, make sure you're on vertex select by clicking here move your mouse over whatever cubes you want to select and then press L and that'll select all of the the cubes together so I'll click L and L and L and just keep pressing L and just move your mouse and click on any ones or select any ones that you want to delete and then press X and delete vertices and then just keep doing that and just delete uh, all the cubes that you want to delete and I'll just select a few more so delete those and so now it's just kind of uh, randomly uh, chunks of cube have been taken out so that looks pretty cool and let's go into rendered mode and just see that it looks pretty nice now this HDRI I do want to rotate it because I don't really like how the lighting is right now um, so I'm gonna go to shading and I'm going to click right here on object this is previewing the object nodes and I want to click on world so now we can edit the world nodes so here's the white river HDRI now I'm going to use a blender add-on it's called the node wrangler and if you don't know about it it's uh, it's already built into blender so you can just enable it really easily so to do that I'll go edit preferences uh, and click on add-ons and then type in node right here and you can see there's node wrangler I have it already enabled because I use it a lot it's a really great add-on and yeah just built into blender if you want to always have this node uh, wrangler add-on in your blender scene so you can use them you can click save preferences I've already done that so whenever I use blender it's always enabled and so now I'm just gonna click on this winter scene HDR and then using the node wrangler I'll press Control T and that will add this texture coordinate node and this mapping node. Okay, so now we can rotate the HDRI. So I'm going to press zero to go into camera mode up here and then uh, just move my mouse up. Pressing Z, press Z and then move your mouse up to go into rendered mode or just click right here. And I'm going to rotate the HDRI so the lighting is going to be different. So right here on this rotation, I can change this to like 75. And now you can see we have some really nice lighting because the lighting was coming from the back. Now it's coming from the side. And if you zoom out, you can see if you can just like look around and see the HDRI and it has light coming in from different angles. So that looks a lot better. I like that. I'm just going to save my project again. Uh, so go to file and save. And now I want to make one of these cubes uh, have a different color because right now the scene doesn't really have a focal point and you don't really know what to look at. So if we, uh, make one of these cubes a different color it'll sort of uh, be bumped out of the image and it will uh, be something to look at so I'm going to click on this cube here this is the cube that I'm going to use and I'll go back into layout I'll go back into the layout right here and I can just go out of rendered mode go back into solid mode and I'll click right here on the materials and right here I'm going to click on this like these two papers or documents and that'll copy the material so it's the same material it's just duplicated and now we can uh, change these settings to make it different so I'll just go back into rendered mode again just so I can see that and I'll just change the color so I'll pull this all the way up to white and then make it a nice orangey color you can uh, make this whatever color you like I think orange looks pretty nice and so that gives a focal element to the scene uh, so now we are ready to render this so I'm gonna do some quick render settings I'll click right here and on the render sampling I will change this to 200 I'm gonna click on the light paths and I will turn uh, the total to one the diffuse to one and the glossy to one and then all the others I'll just turn down to zero because we don't really need uh, blender to calculate all of these so I'll just turn all of these to zero and I'll turn off reflective and refractive caustics that way it'll uh, kind of render a bit faster and I'll save my project again by going file and save and then we'll press F12 and render the image or you can go render and then render image and then after this renders we're gonna do some quick compositing to make this scene look really nice 
Okay, the render's finished. Let's just click on this and this will go to the compositor and we're just gonna do some uh, kind of photo editing. So I'll click on use nodes and then we'll see the nodes. And then using the node wrangler, I'll press control, shift and click right here and that'll add the viewer node. I'm also gonna press N to close this and I'll uh, just pull this down because we don't really need the timeline. And then I'll press a V and that'll move this background image back out. So it'll zoom it out. If you don't see the background image, it might just be because you need to click on this uh, to add the background image. And uh, let's do some uh, color correction if you wanna like change the colors a bit. So I'll pull this out like this. I'll press shift A and click on search and I'll go RGB and click on RGB curves and uh, move it over the viewer and then drag it into the compositor. And then you can uh, change some of these values to kind of change the colors a bit. So this uh, C1, this makes everything brighter, or if you move it down, it'll make everything darker. And then this will add more red or add less red if you move it up or down. So I'm just gonna move it down a little bit actually. And then the green, this G is for green and it adds or removes green. And then this blue, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit so it has a bit more blue. Or if you pulled it down, it would have a lot less blue. So I'll just pull it up like that. Just something like that. You can do whatever you want. And then I need to add the denoise node because right now it's really uh, like you can have all, you see all these fireflies. They're these little like white specks and all this little grain. So if we add the denoise node, it'll smooth that all out. So let's press shift A, click search and start typing in denoise. Click on this and just drop the denoise node right in there. And then you can see it's compositing. And then once it finishes, and now it's finished compositing. So we can just click over to this render tab right here. And this is the render result, but we wanna see what the viewer node is seeing. And so the uh, composite, the finished composite. So click right here on the render result and change this to viewer node. And now this is what the viewer node is seeing. And then we can save this by going image, save as or pressing shift alt S. And then I'll just save this as abstract cubes.png and then I'll click save as image. So that's the finished tutorial. I hope the tutorial was fun and helpful. Leave a comment in the comment section below and thank you for watching.